Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode 37 of Jux and All Things Sports Podcast, presented to you by Always Bullen. If you're listening to us on YouTube, be sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button. If you're on Spotify, be sure to follow, drop a review. A lot of NFL talk coming up. Uh, two divisions we're going through today since we missed last week. Uh, a little bit of preseason football to cover. 22 days, train. 22 days till kickoff. Three weeks. Well, three weeks and one day. Three weeks and one day. Our hard knocks kicked off with the Jets, and just as quickly as America hated Aaron Rodgers, uh, they're right back loving him, including his former fans in Green Bay, namely Parker, Horse, um, Cole. Is it or is it not okay for Packers fans to root for success for Aaron Rodgers? I think that fans can root for whoever they want. Um, so if Parker and Green Bay fans want the success for the Jets and Aaron Rodgers, I, I don't see a problem. I mean, it is the Jets. Um, but if – I mean, I, I don't see any problem with it per se um, if you want to continue down that road. Do you th- uh, I might have. Do you think it's odd for a Lions fan who wished Matt Stafford great success after he left okay. the team? You're to, wearing this really bad. To tell a Green Bay Packers fan that he cannot and should not root for success for his longtime quarterback that left the team. Well, I guess it's not really anybody's place to say who and who they should not uh, be a fan of. But what I was saying is, and I'm not, I guess I'm not a Green Bay expert or a Jets expert, but I don't think things were necessarily, uh, went that well at the end of Green Bay's time with Aaron Rodgers. It was either another team, or retirement and that yeah i mean that's just not good obviously there's something in the organization coaches players i i have no idea what what it actually was um maybe a change of scenery i i have really no idea what it was but he just didn't want to be there and that just can't feel too great if you're an organization who hasn't who has been playing pretty well with him as the quarterback for that long like what more do you want? Like, we we like they had a really good defense last year. I'd say they still do, and the Packers do. Um, I mean, they didn't have a whole lot other than Christian Watson. Um, I mean, they had Romeo Dobbs. Like, Mer- they had like some old guys that were still there, Lazard. Um, but I mean, up until last year, I would say. They had at least one guy, Devontae Adams, Jordy Nelson. We, we talked about all this. Um, but th- I just don't think that everything was left on bad terms. So I can see where Ham's coming from. However, uh, oh, wait, I mean, uh, I, I didn't say Ham. I meant to say someone else. <laughs> uh, no one. This makes no, no sense to everyone that's not in our Twitter group, but whatever. Um, I would say... He can cool it. Anybody can root for who they want to root for. But if you want to spot differences and how it's not the same with Stafford and the Lions, I'm all there for a while. Look, I, I, I understand it's not the exact same situation. That wasn't the basis of my argument. But at the base, it's two long-term tenured quarterbacks by a franchise moving into a new situation. The terms of those situations that va- Different. Lions were heading into a rebuild, new regime. Packers arguably heading into a rebuild. Um, I mean, Aaron Rodgers didn't want to hang around for an offensive rebuild. He's historically liked veteran receivers. He wanted to leave. The front office wanted to get max value for him. The fans were ready to move on. They were ready for Jordan Love. Uh, I mean, it's... It's a little hypocritical to let Matthew Stafford go on and be excited when he wins a Super Bowl and then go and tell a Packers fan, which is historically the Lions, 
larger rivals in the division and tell them they have to root against Aaron Rodgers when he leaves. Um, I think there's just still a little bit of saltiness from Lions fans towards Packers fans saying like, oh, you, you can't claim him like being good on the Jets. Like, you know what? You got to root for your quarterback when he went to L.A. Uh, Packers fans can root their, for their quarterback when he goes to New York. That's my piece on it. That's just what I was thinking is like they wouldn't like – obviously he was with the team for however many years. I, I, I like. And he sat behind Brett teams. Favre too, and Brett Favre yeah. didn't leave on great terms either because he wanted to keep playing and the Packers were ready to move on. Packers were ready to move on to Jordan Love. Again, I didn't say – I didn't say any of this. I'm just trying to find some sort of common ground on why it was maybe said. Because uh, here, let me go to it. I he he specifically said. I don't know why it was said. I don't know why it was said. You can't you can't root for the for them because if he does well, he'll be in the Hall of Fame under the Jets. No, right? no, that's <laughs> no. it's it started with it. It was like it, it would prove that. The Packers have like been mishandling Rodgers all these years. Like if he goes and wins in one year in New York, then it's like, what were you doing all those years in Green Bay when you had him? Um, but we haven't had that many Super Bowl dynasties, period, in this era. Uh, I mean, outside of the Chiefs and the Patriots. Chiefs right now and then Patriots, but not many other multi-Super Bowl winning teams beside, outside of those two, outside of Tom Brady, who is GOAT status, and Mahomes, who is approaching it. Besides then, you're lucky for your team to go out and get one Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford winning a Super Bowl in one year with the Rams just shows the Lions' front office ineptness. Granted, it was the old regime, and now things are changing, but you want to start coming at people for quarterbacks going somewhere and immediately winning? There's one for you. That was just the difference. Well, well, when I was in the argument, and I, I think I buried myself in there uh, unintentionally because I just wanted to spot differences. In the in like Stafford wasn't trying to who wasn't saying retirement or not the Lions. Um, Nobody wanted to go happened. win somewhere, and it wasn't going to happen in Detroit. It, not not disagreeing, but that just it wasn't the same. Um, and when we were rooting for Stafford, he hadn't already won a Super Bowl. So? So we just wanted him to succeed a little bit. Like, Roger, I, I don't know. I'm just literally trying to say how it's different. There's a few other <sighs> things that were mentioned, but I still think, like, Parker and other Packers fans, whoever the fuck you are, can can root for the Jets if you want to, but... Just because they're green doesn't mean, like, they're that cool. I, I don't know. You root for the success of your longtime starting quarterback who you've loved. That's just a gimme. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like, saying there's anything wrong with it. He can do that. He and should they can do, do that. that. He should do that. Yes, but if there's any reason he wouldn't, I would, I like, Ham brought, like, one or two reasons why, and... That makes sense. But I had no idea where he stood, honestly, until today. He's actually pretty at it. He's a big Jets guy. He ha- okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think he mentioned being a big Jets guy. I think he just said it would be cool if they did well. Uh, but then he got really fired up when Ham started talking about Rodgers being remembered as a Jet, not a Packer. <laughs> so let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> Rodgers wins two Super Bowls with the Jets the next two years, what happens? Ah, uh, that's back-to-back Super Bowls out of the AFC. That um, I don't even know why we're talking about it. I think it'd be ridiculously tough. Um, that's why we're talking about it. But I think he'd still sign a one day with Green Bay and retire with them. Okay. Um, I still, I, still I, I also a, think so. So I, I still have an inkling really. of hope that Justin Verlander is going to wear a Tiger's cap into the Hall of Fame because that's not, where, not even a little that's bit. where he was raised. That's like you know they brought you up, they fed you. Yeah, I think if he never had as much success in Green Bay 
as he did. Maybe I can see it if he won two Super Bowls, but no shot. He doesn't go in. Um, and Ham's right for a little bit. Like, New York will want. He, they will want. Brett, yeah, that's uh, some Brett. news. They will want Rodgers in the Hall of Fame uh, in a Jets jersey if that were to happen. But I don't even know why we're talking hypotheticals. I when fucking hate have... New York teams, all of them. I yeah, can't think they of one New York team I like. Big Mets guy. I fucking hate the Mets. Nets? Uh, what about the Nets? Nets are all right. I guess I don't mind the Nets. Like, I don't mind the Knicks either, but I think that's because they've both been so bad. Um, it's it's easy to root for them. And they've been, like, bad. Even this year, the Knicks got, like, a little bit good this season and made the playoffs, and it's all I heard about on Sports Center for a bit. Bills? Uh, I guess that's fair because it's Buffalo, but I don't. they're not, like, city in New York. So they don't get the they don't get the New York media coverage like the Giants and the Jets do for being mediocre. Um, but also like the only reason I don't despise the Bills is because J V likes the Bills. And I don't yeah, want to I hurt hate his the feelings. Bills ever since Thanksgiving. But like I hate just about every team in the AFC. I guess I am kind of a Giants guy because I'm kind of a Danny Dims guy, but <laughs> all right. Um well I hope that didn't clear anything up for Ham or Steed because they'll probably fight over it um, probably, again. Probably after. dug them in even deeper. Yeah. Um, you want to talk a little preseason games? I don't do you have. Wanna, did you I, watch any hard knocks? I didn't. I didn't watch any hard knocks. I didn't uh, watch any preseason besides some highlights. Um, okay. Well, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the Jags and the Lions won. What does a preseason win? Does it mean anything? Um, ever since I sat through a four and preseason and got super hype just to watch the Lions go zero and sixteen, I'm a firm, adamant believer that preseason means absolutely nothing. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> um, Laporta, I think, had like one drop. I think he had one target. Um, other than that, I think he had pretty good. Uh, like blocking and like it, overall tight end played pretty well. Um, JMO, I think had like one deep pass. He dropped. Um, he had a two point conversion. He caught. Um, I, I, I am listening to like pride of Detroit podcast. Um, and they're like saying we're, you know, this is a guy we picked first round. We traded up for, he should be doing a lot more in preseason games uh, against these defenses that are not at full strength for what we got him for. Um, fair to say, um, but I, I think you still can't really decide what he is until after this full season. Um, and, and then even then, you, you only got a full 11 games from him. So um, wait and hold out. Uh, for JMO, speaking of JMO, um, a little hamstring injury today. Um, I think he walked off, no cart um, needed for him. Um, Amon Ra, ankle injury today. Um, Ham said that he was given his helmet back. I was more concerned with Amon Ra because he wasn't suspended for six weeks, and he's also like one of our best players. Um, Jack Campbell also went to the lock back in the locker room today. Just a bad day. Um, I I, th I don't think Reen never needs to go to another uh, training camp ever again. Um, you obviously, think it was sabotage. Bad, it was sabotage. Reen did something. Um, but but injuries happen. We had like Russell Gage. I'm pretty sure he's out for the year. Traylon Burks carted off today. It just happens. I mean, you can the. The list of injuries in preseason before the season even starts is just insane. Like, there has got to be something uh, where you can prevent injuries a little bit more, especially the contact injuries. I hate the fact that up until the season starts, anybody can just be out for the whole year, and it's terrifying as a fan uh, of a team. <laughs> like like Amon Ra, I saw, the, I saw that tweet, and I'm like, oh, 
season's over. And like I I I snapped you guys that, and obviously I didn't think that because I knew it wasn't too bad, and JMO had that. But like, that's honestly the difference. Um, if J if you know if Amon Ra was if it was really bad, that was the difference. If CJ was down really bad, that was the difference. Speaking of CJ, he was all up in everybody's face at um training camp today with reen um reen said he would not shut up for at least two hours he destroyed some running back i'm not sure if it was etn uh calvin ridley was literally talking to him during a press conference today um and even t law per reen got uh started talking to cj um i know you're a big guy that likes to get in people's face and clap in their face at least um during a basketball game or um any other sport that you play um when is it is it too far do you love the competitiveness do you love trash talking um i know it was to the jags so like let's just treat it as if this were a different team uh it, it's it's too far in preseason slash joint practices um i never did it in scrimmages i never did it in practices uh i did it in games when it mattered because the point of that is to you know what think about me don't think about the game and then once you get their minds focused on you and they stop focusing on the game, you let your team go ahead and win the game for you. But in a preseason game, you just look like an asshole. I know Comp would agree with me. Yeah, yeah. Well, Comp, that doesn't... Eh. Comp hates that kind of attitude from his players. You're professionals, yeah. right? Like, act like it. I... I... I think one team needs a little bit, like one guy. Yeah, do it in a game or at least a real oh, preseason game. Imagine, Don't do it at a joint team. practice. What well, a pussy. I mean, what a pussy. Guys. I mean, people get in fights with their own teammates. In During practice. a press conference, man. Well, actually, Calvin Ridley came up to, to, to him, so obviously he got in his head a little bit. You're damn right. Probably on the field, though, like a man. No, no, like CJ got in Ridley's head Just, because he, Ridley came up to CJ's press conference. What a pussy. Ridley? Both of them. <laughs> Ridley's dope um, as fuck, dude. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think we play you guys this year other than this preseason game. So That or the Super Bowl. Breen's got tickets to the game. He's going to the preseason game? Yeah, he just invited me like... 10 minutes ago, but I'm going to Caseville. He's Burger Fest? Yeah. Nice. But yeah, um, I guess Jags preseason, I don't know. There wasn't many takeaways. I think his last first name is Nathan, Nathan Rourke. I don't know if you saw the video of him breaking out of that sack and throwing that dat. Um, yeah, that was sick. He was, he was like throwing it as he was getting sacked. Yeah, he's he's that's fun to see, I guess. Um, you know, you had everybody doing the, oh, he's him. Um, maybe quarterback three. It, it's it came from the CFL. Uh, young pass rush looked good. Uh, coming into the year, we thought it was going to be Chase on starting. It's not looking like it anymore. He was definitely outplayed. Uh, and, and Jadavian Clowney visited with the Jags. Him on a one year would be fun. I do think he's washed. I don't think he's an impact player or anything, but I'll take him out of one year. The pass rush needs help, uh, but we looked good for the most part. I think the Cowboys stink, so I don't I don't think Dak's good. I think Pollard will have a great season. I think the defense is still good. Uh, Trevor Lawrence did throw an early pick, but Dougie P said ball slipped. It wasn't a missed throw or a misread, um, and you could kind of see where he was going over the top to easy E, but apparently it slipped. Allegedly. I don't know. Uh, you mentioned Cowboys. You mentioned Clowney. Uh, Zeke signed to the Patriots. Correct, yeah. Um, and Delvin Cook went to the Jets. Are these big signings, or is it just something big names that used to be big names and are really going to make that big of a difference? Well, how about this? Who's going to make a bigger difference in the offense, Zeke or Dalvin? That's a great question. Um, 
I'm, I, I want to lean Dalvin uh, because I think Brees Hall is going to take a couple weeks to ramp up to full speed. So I think we'll see a little bit more of Dalvin. Um, where I think Zeke might have that Jamal Williams type role that he had with the Lions. You might see a lot of touchdowns get vultured. Uh, but I think Ramondre is like the clear RB1 there, whereas Dalvin Cook might see himself splitting more snaps with Brees Hall than people might think. I think you're 100% right. And the reason why I brought up Clowney is because of his draft when he got drafted. He also got drafted with Johnny Football. Have you watched that untold documentary? Damn, you got to start watching some TV, dude. I've been busy-ish. I don't know. I just I'd rather play games than watch TV. I think media ruins a lot of it. I mean, came out one night and then I felt like I got synopsis of all the important parts of the film on Twitter the next day. You know, he didn't. He spent zero minutes watching any film. Okay, there's you know one whole section of the movie checked off. Like, I, don't I don't know. know. I, I recommend it to anybody that hasn't watched it yet. I thought it was pretty interesting and definitely didn't know the whole, um, I guess, the whole story. I mean, I, he was so dominant as a – I think he was redshirted, but he was a freshman. I mean, he, he was sick. Um, so, last bullet point before we get into the divisions is fantasy football. Um, at what point – how much can we discuss? Like, uh, how much do you trust? Most of our listeners that... are in the league. I know, um, but like, how much do you think you can say? Oh, I don't want to say much. I do think this is the first podcast since I got roped back into it. Is that not true? No, we, we missed last week, which I feel like we had a reasoning for. Something and happened. Then... On what... Oh, I, uh, I had a board meeting. Ah, uh, yes. Oh yeah, you got drunk and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So Bark's back in fantasy football. It's a twelve-man league. We <laughs> reshuffled our ten-man league Dra- yeah. draft draft uh, order. I got the same spot. I'm at three. Bark's at four. The top three stayed the same. A little sauce, but. I don't know if any of us other than Noah kind of wants it. And I don't even know if Noah knows who he's going to get. Oh, Ham wanted to. to Ham wanted to? Oh, yeah. Of course he did. I feel like this is Train Just Defending Ham podcast, but I don't know if he wanted to. I'll, I'll trade him two for four straight up. See if he does it then. <laughs> what? I, all right. All I'm right, just gonna... kidding. I, we all saw the wheel spin, so I'm just being facetious. Um I don't know where I'm going to go at four yet, obviously, because one through three is shaking up daily. Uh, but I, I would be willing to trade back if anyone's listening. Uh, shuffle up later points in the draft, maybe some pick swaps. Um, there's a certain threshold I'd be okay going down to. And then being like, well, if I'm here, I at least get one of these eight guys or something like that. So You're going into this year after a stressful year last year. Um, obviously there was a punishment last year. Um, this year, the punishment for the last place person is just paying the second place's way in a, um, in a money league for $20. So you basically just pay $40. So, I mean, paying money isn't the greatest thing ever. And you'd rather win all the money, but going into it without a punishment that is really an actual like physical punishment, um, are you going to be able to enjoy football a little bit more? Or are you still going to be tweaking every Sunday? I'm be tweaking every Sunday. I really didn't want to do it. Um, I mean, how long did it take? I mean, how many? Sna- I mean, it. I probably took a span of ten minutes. But how many snaps did you? Have, you were. <laughs> how many snaps did you have to send me to like really convince me to finally like? It wasn't easy. Ten to fifteen, maybe. It, I just I. I I, just, I get really involved, and then it's the thing like... is, like, Wyatt wanted to join. I have no problem with that. And then we were going to switch to 12, and then I didn't want a random 12th person, so... I know, and that's why I ended up I think it worked out. In. I think it worked out. Um, but I don't want to be in. I don't want to be in. 
after we actually do our draft in, I think, 19 days. We have 19 days until our draft. We can start talking fantasy football because I don't know how much I can discuss here. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine after the draft. But I... I'm already ready to be done with fantasy football again. I'm hoping Shut someone else up. wants I'm hoping someone else wants to retire after this season so we can go back to a 10-man league and me and someone else can bail cuz I already know I'm going to be stressed. I'm going to be stressed every day football's on. I'm if be- you're in the in our league and you're listening, you have to convince everyone not to quit and we just have to re-go. We have to keep going. I'll convince so Bob someone can't to quit. quit. Oh, good luck. Uh, Nars are already wants- on the ropes. Nars on the ropes. Oh, speaking of Nar, I Snapchatted him before we got on. Asked him if he wanted to start coming back on next week. He said, sure. So he's coming back. Next week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, we'll have our predictions wrapped up. It'll be right before week one of college football. Yeah. Right before well, we go to the oop. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we should We're be gonna able to miss do- week one of the of college football. In the U, it don't matter. Zero. It don't matter, man. I it's base. It's like really nothing, but um, I don't yeah, care about any of those games. I know Ham said he does, but I'd rather be in the middle of nowhere breathing that air than watching bullshit college football games. I'm not too concerned about it. Sorry, could you hear that? No, my computer just tweaked out. Maybe that's an L take. I don't know, but. I'm excited to be in the U. Not like the fact that I'm missing week zero college football doesn't bother me too much. Yeah, it's never anything too important, but it it would, you know. It'd be Um, well, we wouldn't be if you didn't have 16 weddings this month. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not my fault, but just sounds like I'm getting a little bit of blame here for making us miss week zero. No, 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 no. All right, all right. Let's jump yeah. in. Let's jump in AFC East standings. We'll wrap up. We'll double dose up on these. Get the AFC, NFC East, AFC, NFC West. AFC East train. We talked a little bit about the Jets already. Uh, Bill's yeah. favorite to win. Walk us through the division. I think this is probably the funnest division, um, or one of the funnest divisions to have this bet the odds to win the the division bills jets dolphins patriots i think it could go any which way in the top three there um dolphins tried to improve their defense with jalen ramsey didn't work out too well with his injury jets obviously um improved in a lot of different ways uh, by getting Rodgers and everything that comes with Rodgers and signing back Quinn Williams. Bills at plus 120, Jets at plus 270. I've kind of eliminated the Dolphins from my thought process. I think the Jets at plus 270 is juicy enough to take. Um, and the Bills plus 120 um, is just its just not a lot um, there. I think the Bills also are the best team in there, but I can I can see the Jets winning. So if I had a sprinkle, I'd put something on the Jets plus two seventy. Um, why not? I don't think it's that bad for what they were able to do last year um, and who they got this year. Uh, I I agree with you on that. I think the value is there at plus two seventy. Uh, you can take a swing on the Dolphins, but for an additional plus thirty. I think the Jets are way more of a wagon than the Dolphins are plus 300. And I just, I don't know. I, I, I think last year was the Bills' prove-it year. Um, we talked some shit about them on the podcast during playoffs, and Justin got really mad at us, and then the Bills did exactly what we said they were going to do in the playoffs, and they lost to a better team and the Bengals and the Chiefs. So they got to bounce back. They either got to bounce all the way back or they roll over for the Jets, who improved this year. Uh, I, I also I love the Jets at plus 270. I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think the Bills are just kind of at a stagnant spot in, in, in their, their years. Um, win totals, 
Uh, Bills over 10.5 wins, minus 150. Jets over 9.5 wins, minus 115. Dolphins over 9.5 wins, plus 100. And the Patriots over 6.5 wins, uh, minus 140. If I have, I'm going to say con- constant here, or consistent, and say that the, the Jets over 9.5 wins, I think they can win 10. I, I think they won 8 or 9 last year. And they got that much better. I mean, they're obviously playing a lot b- better teams um, than I would see in the NFC. But, hey, I, I think that's the best one to take in there. Um, I love ones. Jets over nine and a half. Me too. I'm also looking at these predictions here, and I'm noticing Oh shit! the Titans and the Colts <laughs> joined the <laughs> AFC East. Here, let me uh, – <laughs> let me – yeah. I don't know if those records replace Dolphins and Patriots or if those carried over from the AFC Let South. Me check. Let me check. Um, that's that's bananas. Um, all right, do your predictions first then. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll take the Jets at to finish first at 12 and 5. Um I think Dalvin Cook makes them a lot better. Uh, I think Garrett Wilson's going to really step up this year. Uh, I don't think Aaron Rodgers has lost a step at all. I think he'll continue to be great with the Jets. Uh, Biggest question mark is O-line. So that's what it's going to come down to. If Aaron Rodgers can't get protected, he's going to get frustrated. Uh, But it is still Aaron Rodgers. He's smart. He'll figure it out. Um, but the defense is great. It was great last year. It's a defensive head coach. I don't think they'll make it super far. I think defensive head coaches are a handicap to most teams. Uh, I can see them making a playoff run, but I can't see them making a deep playoff run. Uh, I got the Bills number two. I'll put them at 11-6. and six. They're still a good football team. They'll win the games they should win, and... They'll win a couple close ones, and they'll lose a couple close ones. Dolphins. The, my, my problem with the Dolphins is position by position, they're, no, they, they've they got to be better than the Patriots. The Patriots stink. I'll put the Dolphins at 7 and 10. Um, I think two is bad, dude. Um, I know. I think he's really bad. I don't know why people can't see that. People knew he was bad. And then, like, Tyreek Hill caught a couple passes for a couple thousand yards, and they're like, oh, Tua's good. No, Tua just got Tyreek Hill. Um, He's he's a lefty with mush for brains. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I don't think they're going to be good. I don't think Tua's the answer. Um uh, it's just, I they have the makings for good. T- I think Jalen Waddle and Tyreek are great weapons. I think they have a decent running back room. Um, their O line is okay. Their defense is on the up and up. But I, I just, I, I think there's a ceiling as to how far Tua can go. Uh, and then the Patriots. I mean, they probably go like five and twelve. Um, Bill Belichick probably mutually parts ways at the end of the season. I think it's going to be a bloodbath in New England. That's wild. Um, okay, well, I, I fixed mine. Um, I had the Bills eleven and six, Jets ten and seven, Dolphins nine and eight, and then the Patriots seven and ten. So a little more optimistic at the uh, the bottom end with the Dolphins and the Patriots, and a little less optimistic with the Jets and the Bills. But I don't. I. Other than the Dolphins, I have every every the. Uh, every one of these teams other than the Dolphins um, hitting their o- over and win total. So good division. And um, you know what I might do is just parlay all of my division winners that I say on Jux and just see what happens. NFC East, run us through it. Uh, odds to win this division – uh, Eagles at minus 135, Cowboys plus 190, Giants plus 850, and the Commanders plus 1600. If you're betting anyone other than the Eagles, 
crazy. I think you have to bet the Eagles, and it's theirs to lose. If they don't win this division, I think there's a major injury or something wrong. Um, they're, they were clearly the best team last year, and they've only got better with their draft. And um, man, they lost a couple guys, uh, CJ. Um, but I, I think they're only getting better, really. Um, so I got the Eagles. What do you got? Uh, I agree with you. You're dumb not to take the Eagles. Um, I don't. I don't hate a, a Giants sprinkle though, uh, just in case. Maybe Hertz goes down, something like that. Uh, plus eight fifty. I, I don't know. Decent enough. I did kind of glance down a bit. I love Giants over seven and a half wins at plus a hundred. That can't be real. I'll double check, but everything else looks pretty consistent on this portion of it. Um, why are we I down on the Why are we down on the Giants? Ask DraftKings. I don't know. I'll take it too. I mean, nine and eight last year. Saquads is back. They add Darren they Waller. Play. They won a playoff game. Like I don't. Danny Dimes got paid. Maybe he stinks, but I think he's got something. Um, Dable fixed his interceptions last year. Made him a better quarterback. Um, yeah, other wins, win totals, Eagles at uh, over 11.5, Cowboys 10.5, Giants, like we said, 7.5, and, and the Commanders 6.5. Um, I'll agree with you, Buck. I think 7.5. With the Giants, is probably the best one at, at this because I don't know if the Eagles are hitting 12. Um, I'd maybe take the under for the Cowboys, 10.5. I don't see them hitting 11, maybe 10. But I think Giants is a pretty good number. Right, especially a plus 100. It yeah. Is, yep, it is still 7.5 plus, plus 100. That's ridiculous. Um, there's no way they finish under 500. They're returning it. I mean, there's no way. There's no way. I think they're going to be great this year. Now, I like you said, Eagles drafted well, returned well, already the best team. Um, I think they'll run away with the division, but I think it'll be Eagles at 13-4. and four. Um. Then I'll take the Giants at nine and eight, maybe ten and seven. Then give me the boys at like uh, eight and nine, and then Commanders. I think will be like four and thirteen. I don't think Sam Howell's good, and I don't think they have any weapons that'll like accidentally win them games. Um, so they might yeah. win some close ones. Four and thirteen might even be too optimistic. I might change mine um, for the Commanders. Um, I like the the other ones. Um, Eagles eleven and six. Um, Cowboys nine and eight. Giants nine and eight. I think that's that's one that I think I'll be pretty close on. Um, with the Eagles up top whether they have 10 wins or if they have 15 wins they'll be at the top with the cowboys and giants sniffing 10 wins um maybe getting there but i think they're both going to be around nine wins and then i have the commanders at seven and ten uh however i don't think they'll get seven wins i don't know what i was talking about maybe i thought they had an easy schedule maybe they don't i have no idea what i'm saying but i'm gonna say they have six wins six and eleven so um I'm pretty confident with that division for some reason. I don't know why. Um, next is one of the, um, well, what we thought last year to be one of the best divisions um, in football, the AFC West odds to the win division, uh, Chiefs minus 165, Chargers plus 340, Broncos plus 550, and the Raiders plus 1,200. Bark. You want to start us off on this one? Yeah, I will. Um, even more of a slam dunk than the Eagles winning their division. Obviously, got to take the Chiefs to win this. Um, 
Chargers are a solid team. They got Kellen Moore now, right? That's who they're always... Am I crazy? No, no, you're not crazy. I don't... I, he might be their OC or quarterback's coach, or, but I know he's okay. on, um, on the Chargers. But they're still not the Chiefs. Um, like, I, I wouldn't even tell you to sprinkle the Broncos or anything. Like, it's just... I don't know. I don't... Yeah, there's no sprinkling. Yeah, it's just the there's no reason. It's You're wasting money. Um, now, I, I think... The Broncos are going to be good this year. I really do. Maybe I'm buying. That's where we can finally debate because I don't know if Sean Payton changes this team that had so much hype and potential and all this to a team that completely flips it around. I disagree. I I think that's what he's going to do. Um, Maybe. I don't think Russ Wilson just got bad overnight. Um, I don't think he was that great at the end of in Seattle, though. Maybe not, but Pete Carroll, defensive coach, Sean Payton, quarterback, whisperer. Um, I don't know. I, re- I really think the Broncos are going to be good this year. It's tough because do I think they're going to be better than the Chargers? I don't know. Um, Broncos might hold on to a 27-0 lead, though. <laughs> I knew it was going to be mentioned a little bit. And if Noah is listening, you had to have thought it was going to be mentioned. Um, but I mean, so I think we're both. The win totals has them close: nine and a half for the Chargers, eight and a half for the Broncos. Yeah, I just to be clear, I'd also take the Chiefs to win the division. Um, a hundred percent. Um, Chiefs eleven and a half wins, Chargers nine and a half, like you said, Broncos eight and a half, and the Raiders uh six and a half. Um, give me Chiefs over eleven and a half wins. Um, they could start zero and two. If they started off zero and two, I'd be so I I wouldn't even care that I had that that uh, over. Um, man, if they started off zero and two, man, that'd be that'd be uh, a lot of fun. If yeah, it'd be like two franchises who've been down in the dumps for a little bit just come out and just bully the Chiefs to start the season. I'm so scared. Oh I'm yeah, so me scared. too. I think we'll get I think we're gonna get stomped and then I'll be saying the Jags suck by week two. But Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean now, I, who do you do I you think, like the Broncos win total? Yeah, I think they'll finish over five hundred, which is the big key there. Uh and I think it's a way better value than the Chargers. I think the Chiefs go thirteen and four. I think Chargers ten and seven. Broncos nine and eight. Raiders five and twelve. I think mine's almost dead nuts with yours. Um, Chiefs thirteen and four. Chargers eleven and six. Broncos nine and eight. And the Raiders also five and twelve. I have seven and ten here, but I, I with the Josh Jacobs situation, I know Jimmy Garoppolo only typically wins football games, but I don't know. I I don't see them doing too well in a division that's supposed to do really well. So, um, man, if the, if for people who don't know, I think. Obviously, all the Lions fans know we play the Chiefs first, but they also pl- the Chiefs also play the Jags second. So, yeah, Jags on that division winner schedule this year. Hopefully, should, we'll get there next year. Should so. be a doozy. We got to play the Niners too. Speaking of the Niners, we want to jump over to the NFC West. Um, 49ers are favored to win this division, minus one sixty. Seahawks might or plus. 195 Rams plus 1000 and the Cardinals plus 2500. Who do you like? Numbers I love to see and here's why. Um again, I feel this might be the theme besides the AFC East we talked about maybe taking the Jets cuz maybe the Bills take a step back. Uh but the other three division divisions are like at this point we are dumb we did not take the favorite. Um 
I think you got to take the 49ers, and I think it's a gimme, and here's why. They were good with a third-string quarterback in the middle of the season. Maybe Brock Purdy's him. Um, but I think we'll see with Jimmy G in Vegas this year that it's not Jimmy G winning football games. It's the San Francisco 49ers coaching, defense, uh, and offensive aptitude. I don't think, like, don't get me wrong, you put a good quarterback on that team, a great quarterback on that team, uh, you'd be dumb not to put money on them to win the Super Bowl. But this team can win big games without big game winning quarterbacks. The Seahawks are entirely dependent on Geno Smith coming back and doing what he did last year. Big ask. Big ask. And Geno Smith was good at West Virginia, um, but you don't stumble and bumble around the NFL as long as he did. If you have talent like that, that sticks. Um, I think he was tough to game plan for. People haven't seen Geno Smith on an everyday basis in a long time. Um, I think there might be some hints. I mean, he didn't have the mobility of Colin Kaepernick, um, but I think he was just a nightmare to game plan around. I, I I think the Seahawks are going to be the team that crash and burn just a little bit. I mean, the defense is still solid with a defensive head coach. Um, But if you think Geno Smith is going to be what he was last year, I really don't think it'll even be close. That being said, they have the benefit of the Rams and the Cardinals being in their division. Um, I told y'all Kyler Murray sucked. And I've only been proven right ever since. You can throw numbers in my face. I'll sh- throw playoff records in your face. Um, pretty sure he's injured to start the year too, right? Yes. All season or like half the season? Six weeks? Yeah, that sounds about right. What a, he's, um, he's a pussy. Right. He's scared. He doesn't want to play because he knows he sucks. He got his guaranteed con like. Cardinals are fucked. If you're a Cardinals fan, I'm sorry. You paid the wrong guy a lot of money because you got bullied into it. Um, Because if you didn't pay him, then oh no, so what? What you needed was a guy with balls who went in there, picked Josh Rosen, missed, and then went and picked Kyler Murray again. It's okay to say you missed. What you can't do is give big money to someone when you missed, hoping that it'll be right eventually. Um, Because you missed. Kyler Murray sucks. Cardinals, therefore, now suck. Uh, they'll probably start off like one and five. Uh, I mean, Colt McCoy, I, I'd almost rather have him throwing a football than Kyler Murray. Um, I wouldn't rather have him under center, obviously. Give me the athleticism of Kyler Murray. Uh, but he could shock the nation a little bit. He doesn't have the weapons to do it, though. I don't know who's going to get receptions for him. Uh, is it Rondale Moore that's there? Why Hollywood and Marquise Ron Depp, Brown, oh yeah. those two. Yeah. So they got two short, fast guys. Uh, they historically do really well in the NFL. John Ross. Yeah, right. All these guys who broke combine records in the 40. Ever hear of them again? Not normally. I I don't know. Uh, I'd take the 49ers over 10 and a half wins. I think that's money in the bank. I don't know. I don't know. So I um, I like your take, and I it might be chalk. I mean, we're, we're kind of going pretty chalk other than the Jets today. But, I mean, these are three favored uh, division winners that we went over in the last three divisions. And um, to be a favored division winner, it, is, it means something. Um, people forget, and I know they don't really forget, but the – the 49ers went and got Christian McCaffrey and didn't lose once he started playing. Uh, basically. I, I mean, the man it is just the best running back in the league, whether you want to call him a running back, receiver, even threw a touchdown last year. Um, it, it's, it, fits, it fits with their offense. Um, they have so much talent. I think Kittle small injury i think he should be back by the time um the season starts but even so they 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 score their defense is incredible 
Um, and the Seahawks, like you said, like I agreed with most of what you said. Last year, I took the win total for the Seahawks under. That came back to bite me because I, no one thought they were going to do as well as they did. And for Geno to come out and do exactly what he did last year again, it it would blow people's minds, honestly. It, it, there's just been so much in the past that would say that you can't you can't do that again um, based off of how you used to play. Um, it, it's just, I mean, it would be wild, good for him if he does, but um, let's take the, the 49ers. Might be pretty bold of me. Um, here, I'll, I'll go over the win totals. Uh, Niners, 10.5 wins. Seahawks, 9.5 wins. Rams, 6.5 wins. And the Cardinals, 4.5 wins. I would take the Rams over 6.5 wins. It's bold. I I, I know. Um, and Baker we trust? Baker plays for the Bucks. And Stetson Bennett we trust? And Matthew Stafford still plays for the Rams. <laughs> Stetson Bennett had a pretty good preseason game. Um, I, I just think they can get seven wins. I think they can get seven wins. They just won a Super Bowl. They lost some guys. I know, but... You know, all you need on offense is Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford. True, true. Defense that's, that's, looks rough, though. They do have one guy on defense that I don't care if you have a whole rest of your defense of me and you. They have Aaron Donald. Um, yeah. yeah, I know, I know, I yeah. know. Their secondary is probably ass, but I think those three guys can win you seven football games against the Cardinals twice, right? Uh, they do play them twice. I, I just I can see it and I know Ham wants to take their under and it is bold but hey let's I mean I would take it if I had to uh, out of any of those win totals. Uh, did you go over your predictions too? Yeah, I got uh, I got Niners going twelve and five. Um, okay. Okay. I have the Niners going ten and seven, um, winning this division. Um, they won the division last year. It's a, it's a little bit more challenging of a schedule. They're a great team. There's just kind of this off season. What's going to happen at quarterback? Brock Purdy's starting. They got Sam Darnold. They got Trey Trevor La- Trey Lance. Um, um, I just I think it's just too much talk. I think they can do better, but I think it's a conservative ten and seven. Um, I have the Seahawks nine and eight. Um, and then I have the Rams. I was really high up on the Rams um, when I, I was doing that. these schedules with nine and eight. I would change it um, to seven or eight t- wins. I I still think they get over the win t- the win total of six and a half. Um, but I can see seven or eight wins if they hit nine. I can't say I told you so because I uh, redacted on that. But Cardinals, you were spot on, Bach. They got screwed. They got hosed. I mean, they. Might be in a pretty good position next year uh, in the draft. No, I mean not. Yeah, next to pick year. Caleb Williams, maybe. <laughs> they might be in a good position ne- in next year's draft. Um, but You're ready I to learn Canadian, going... Kyler Murray, <laughs> or the XFL. Yeah, maybe. He stinks, uh, dude. Three and fourteen for the Cardinals. Um, I got the Which, Seahawks going eight and nine or seven and ten. I have the Rams going five and twelve, uh, and I got the Cardinals going two and sixteen. Oh, okay. Yeah, checks out. So it's just a powerhouse um, in the 49ers, oh, yeah. according to Buck. So we have finally went through all of the divisions in football. Next week, like I said, Nar will be back. We'll go over MVP, Super Bowl favorites, Coach of the Year. All the fun stuff um, that we started off with the, the podcast started almost a year ago. And do you want to talk any baseball? I do have that record on there uh, for the Tigers. That doesn't count uh, today's game. Uh, today's game was phenomenal. Uh, we actually did get the dub. Torkelson hit two bombs. Riley Green continuing to look nice. Updated prospect rankings came out, and the Tigers fared quite well. A lot of people concerned with the drop that Jace Jung took. It wasn't so much as Jace Jung getting worse. It's just, you know, when you get an influx of first-year draft players who come into the rankings, 
other guys who rose a little bit more. Some guys get pushed down, and second basemen are normally the ones who do it because the athleticism isn't there. But Jace Jung is still on track to be a phenomenal player. Jackson Job moved up in the rankings. I think Max Clark came in at like 15 on the MLB Top 100, which is phenomenal. He's been smashing baseballs. Um, and who else do we have up in there? Buck. How can I be missing him? Jace Jung, Jackson Job, Max Clark, Kevin McGonigal. Kevin McGonigal got ranked. Um, and he's looked – that could be wrong, but – Oh, um, Fuck. Now I remember Colt Keith. Colt Keith moved up in the rankings quite a bit. Um, but McGonagall's also hitting well in the minors. A lot of the draft guys are looking good so far. Four guys in the top 100. I mean, going into this year, we had maybe one, um, depending on which one you looked at. Baseball America had Job at 96. MLB Pipeline did not have Job in the top 100. But now we got four prospects in the top 100. Max Clark is high. He's hitting dongs. He's hitting doubles. He's hitting everything. Spencer Torkelson, 20 home runs on the year so far. It's been a minute since we've had a 20 home run hitter. Uh, it's been since 2017 we had a guy who hit 25 home runs in our lineup. That really? Was, that was Justin Upton and J.D. Martinez. They did it. Um, Remember when we had them? It's been six years since we've had a guy who hit 25 bombs in our lineup and Torkelson's five away. If he rounds out his career being a consistent 240, 30 bomb hitter, I'll be ecstatic. And I don't think that's a high ceiling to put on the guy. From what I've been seeing after his second year in the MLB, I think we could be looking at 240, 40 bomb a year hitter. Um, We'll see, though. I mean... Matt Olson, for example, he's like 28. He's never had a season like he's had this year. Guys can continue to grow in baseball. Uh, in basketball, you can declare busts a little bit early. Uh, NFL, if your quarterback doesn't have it within his first three years, you kind of know. With baseball, guys just break out when they break out. Um, and what I've seen this year so far from Torque is growth. Two bombs in one day. I, I don't remember the last time I saw it from a Tiger. Um, it might not be that long ago, but the last time I was paying attention and like, no, I don't know. But it's fun. Seeing his name pop up twice on my phone for home runs today was fun. I'm interested to see how free agency goes. I was talking to Reen. I'd like Illich to throw his wallet on the table and say, all right, Scott Harris, you've done a good job with the farm. You got guys, pull up the ones who are competitive Go sign Aaron Nola. Go sign Matt Chapman. Give them whatever they need. Get a gold glover on third base. Get another ace on the bump. Uh, and lock Rod back down. Ooh, uh, Steve Eisman. Steve oh. Eisman pulled off a trade, too. Got Jeff Yeah, Petrie, I, I saw you of, and Ham talking about it, but I had no idea what it was. Uh, son of Dan Petrie, defenseman. Got clowned for it a little bit because we have a lot of defensemen right now, and they're all kind of like they were good five years ago. Uh, but we're pa- we're only paying thirty five percent of his salary. It's a good like low risk, high reward. Sit and wait until a younger guy gets ready. Uh, but like Zach said, it was just funny because it was middle of the day on a Tuesday, and nobody knew like oh so and so are in talks for this. It was just like boom trade. Nobody knew until it happened. Uh, and that's how Stevie Y does it. Uh, fun fact. Uh, didn't start off to a great start this week in uh, fantasy baseball. Um, I had, like, pitchers get me, like, negative 35 points on Monday. But, fun fact, I haven't lost with Juan Soto back. My 11-week win streak got snapped due to some uh, suspicious play for Marine. Uh Suspicious? Yeah, you didn't steal that shit going down in the chat. The way the way ESPN Fantasy Baseball app works is you get 12 starts per week. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I I never understand it. I'm going to throw them in there. I'm going to throw all my guys in there on Sunday, and if they play, they play. If the points count, they count. It does. And I'm like I I'm the same way. And I I saw that Reen had two starters. I knew he was going to go one start over, but the motherfucker 
knowing he was going to hit his limit, still went out and picked up another starter to play that day, and he got him 17. Was that the difference? Uh, I lost by 17. That guy he picked up got him 17 points. So you would have tied? We would have tied, but he also would have, if he didn't pick him up, he would have been at 13 of 12 starts. So, like, if he would have started 12 pitchers, I'd have won because I only used 10 starts. So I said hey. in playoffs, if you use more than 12 starts, it's an automatic DQ. Oh, yeah. I mean, you are the commissioner. Um, I, I have an announcement to make. Hammy texted me like two and a half hours ago and said, I have officially picked my Super Bowl team for this uh, NFL season. Um, and then he just sent me a gif of Brock Purdy. Um so if you want to back them, uh, there's a FanDuel Super Boost or just a boost uh, if you pick a Super Bowl team. I think with the way it is, like you said, easier division, might have an easier road with the, the amount of wins they get, might have a one seed, and it might just, might just be easier. Um, NFC is a clown show. Yeah. Yep, well, the Eagles almost won the Super Bowl, and I know it almost doesn't cut, cut it, but what he wants to go by this year instead of Philly Ham, because that, that was a pretty big thing last year, is San Fran Ham, and I kind of fucking love it. Tell him to put some hair on his balls and pick the Jaguars to come out of the AFC and win it. Well, if he listens, I'm sure you tell him straight <laughs> to his face right now. Ham. Hey, Pick the 49ers, who are a team who almost hobbled to a Super Bowl last year despite, like, 17 quarterback injuries. In fact, Phillip Rivers allegedly was ready to come out of retirement to play for them if he needed to. Pick an underdog, man. Pick an AFC guy, at least. That's not the Chiefs. Come to Jacksonville. Be uh, Sonny Ham. I don't know. Jackson Ham. Jackson Ham. Yeah. It's I I'm I'm so devastated for this season. The AFC is going to suck. Um we'll jump to wager wheel. Obviously my golfer didn't win. He didn't even make the cut. Train you hit your over in your baseball game. First wheel spins coming your way. Nice. Can't wait for a wheel spin. And wait, you got a gonna... you got a free pick. Another one? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, that's hype. What was your question? I can't wait to get back into teasers. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're going to do teasers, and we're going to do all our NFL bets, but we're still going to do wager wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I don't MLB know. MLB away run line. Oh, yeah. I. Good luck on that, because. Why? When I tried to do that. I mean, at least for tomorrow. I guess you could still bet on something today. Yeah, it's only but six thirty. It's not fair to the viewers. Yeah, hmm. that's fair. What is my password? Oh, I got the Tigers money line tomorrow. Tigers money line. Google pitching against the Guardians at the Guardians. Uh, free pick just says that I can do this, and it was honestly a lot easier than doing any research. So get them while they're hot. Away, away money line. I'll take. Uh, oh, oh, money line. Oh, money line. Um, that changes what? things. MLB away money line is mine. Oh, I thought you said run line. So did I, because I saw ML. I don't know. I don't know why I thought that. I literally run, have spread run. on here. Money line. Um, fuck. I mean, let's... Uh, this is tough. This is tough. 
Uh, let's go Arizona Diamond Diamondbacks. Oh, you didn't want to take you want you want to tail train? Well, I, I I I thought about it. I was like, oh, I could tail train, line it up, but I didn't. <laughs> Diamondbacks. I, yeah, I I don't know. I got Zach Callen on my fantasy team, so figure I'll double up on rooting for him. Diamondbacks versus the Padres. <laughs> train any closing thoughts? Uh, two subs we gained. In the last two weeks. Two subs? We were off. Yeah, we're at 26. Love that. Let's get to 30, boys. If you want another duck race, spam that sub button. Take your mom's phone. Subscribe on her YouTube account. She won't notice. Doesn't she doesn't look at her subs. Steal your sister's phone. Sub on her phone. Ask your buddy, hey, can I call my mom really quick on his phone? Subscribe to our YouTube. Get us to 30. We'll have another duck race, train, anything else. Or you could just tell them about us, and that that works too. Or you could take their phone, subscribe, whatever. I don't care how we get the subs. I just want them. I don't give a fuck. Train? I'm so ready to fist it. Thank you for watching episode 37 of Jux and All Things Sports Podcast presented to you by Always Bullin. Again, if you're on YouTube and you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. If you're on Spotify, thanks for listening along. Drop that review. Hit that follow button so you get notified when new episodes drop. NFL season's coming up. It's close. College football coming up. Thanks again for listening. And as always, boys, remember to fist it.